it's 8.30. Um, shall I start? Yes, please. Yes. 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 yes, so for those of you who come, um, <clears> thank <throat> you very much for coming. My name is Serene, and uh, my surname is Singh, and I am somebody who tries uh, to create a better impact on the world and to try and create better possibilities for the world. So what happened to start this whole panel discussion is I had the misfortune of sitting next to Guan and Julian during the APSS convention. And of course, the two guys have completely different views about <laughs> online communication. And um, so sitting next to the two of them, they almost came to blows. They, they didn't, so, but they completely disagree with each other. And I thought, why don't you guys sit down and let's have a panel and you can really talk about this. Because um, as somebody who is an outsider, I thought it would be really interesting to see two experts with different views to get you know, deep into the subject. And of course, uh, being, you know, first being a lady and secondly, being somebody who really believes um, in authenticity, I thought I must invite Andre on. I had uh, sat next to Andre the day before that happened. And I was like, Andre, do you want to come on and talk about character? Because to me, it's not just about content or, you know, the context, but really it's about who you are. And of course, Andre very kindly agreed, the Queen Dane to come. <laughs> um, and this is how the whole panel started. Um, and so what happens is um, after that, um, we, I decided that, yeah, what I really wanted to do is to make a good impact online. So I have three experts. Um, what can I get from them uh, to help myself and help anybody else uh, to make a real impact online? So that's essentially where this panel got started and also um, the whole topic for this today's panel discussion. Um, now, uh, so just a short uh, introduction to the three uh, panelists. Uh, so first is Andre, uh, ladies first, right? So Andre is the queen of authenticity online. If you don't <laughs> believe right, that she's a queen, you should see the APSS uh, convention <laughs> video. And if you don't believe that you can be authentic online, then uh, sit down with Andre and the Queen will tell you otherwise. <laughs> she will really be able to help you to, you know, be yourself online, to be real online, and uh, she can tell you all about it. So that's Andre. Um, and then there is, of course, Guan. Uh, Guan is the god of vertical video. I'm not sure if video actually has a religion, but if it does, Guan is it. So what happens is uh, Guan is um, an advertising big wig. He actually left a fairly big uh, advertising company because he really believed in vertical video and he was going to do it on his own. Um, and so he is now um, all into this vertical video and pushing it out into the world. So obviously he believes um, in the package, in, the, in you know, the context of the thing. He believes that his lousy vertical video was from your good content horizontal video any day. Which of course Julian completely disagrees with, correct Julian? Completely disagrees with, right? Um, so who is Julian? Julian is the godfather of good content. So um, first of all, why is he a godfather? Mm. So you may not know this, but Julian used to be a sniper. Do not offend Julian. Um, and <laughs> what happens? Yes, do not offend Julian. Um, and um, he's the one who will help you out, even if you're new, even if you completely have no idea what to do, um, to you know, um, help you to create good content and help you to really um, be able to um, get the content out. So um, the thing I am the most jealous of Julian about is that he is an award-winning videographer with National Geographic. Now mm. that is a job that I so want. Um, and because of that, he has done a lot of good content. He's made over a thousand videos in the little room behind him. Um, and uh, he's today coming to share with us about content. So that's a little bit about the three panelists. Uh, anything that you guys want to add um, that I missed out on? Any accolades that you want to further add to yourselves? Yeah. No, no. I, you know, my only observation is we've got the broadcaster, the previous advertiser, <clears throat> and the communications professional. So we've got three really interesting perspectives that we we will agree with each other, we'll complement each other, but also we'll have dis we'll, we'll disagree as well. So I thought mm -hmm. I think that's an interesting combination of backgrounds. So um. In that case, we'll just start off with the first question. Um, mm -hmm. The question, of course, is exactly what we wrote on, I mean, what the title of it is, which is what do each of you think uh, would really make, um, you know, an impact online if I really wanted to be heard in such a, you know, noisy and crowded internet, what could I really do? So could I um, invite the lady to speak first? You're so polite. <laughs> so, 
So my background is communications, but uh, probably for more than a decade, I, I moved into the content marketing space. So I've done all sorts of different communication roles, but real passion for content marketing. So at the same time, I was sort of trying to raise awareness and get attention for the field in Asia. I was also building my own presence on social media right across lots of different platforms. I've got two very distinct profiles, my professional one, a personal one, as well as my own sort of, you know, my Facebook community, which is a separate again, right? Um, and I've just been sort of plugging away, building, building a brand, um, not consciously doing it. Um, I love information. I love sharing knowledge. I used to, you know, when I was based in London, I used to fax a friend in Sydney because I thought he might enjoy the articles, right? So I love to share knowledge. I love to share information. If something inspires me, I'm going to presume it's going to inspire other people. So it, it, this sort of thing grew, um, but it all came from a very natural place. Um, and then people started asking me to teach them how to do it, which I thought was a bit weird because you just do it, right? Um, and I realised that's one of my, you know, we've all got our own little super superpowers, um, but we're all, usually we're so, uh, we're just so naturally gifted at things that we do that we don't even realise that they're a superpower. So I started teaching people and that's kind of where the journey began. And it's been really interesting being on this journey for this period of time. So it's more than a decade, written over a thousand blogs, video is not my thing. Um, I'll do it because I have to, not because I want to. Um, but the, you know, the number one thing I keep, well, it's the last couple of years, you know, it's like everybody else is like, well, we got to, we got to do it. Got to get on LinkedIn, got to do this, got to do that. Um, and people are doing it. They're executing because I think they have to, but if you want to stand out, you've got to say, well, what do I want to be known for? What's my point of passion? What's the, what's the, what's the shift that I want to make in the world? And it doesn't have to be a big thing. It can be a small thing. I mean, the riches are in the niches, right? So um, it's about getting really, really focused about what you want to be known for and then go out there on the appropriate platforms with that message. So I see a lot of people doing a lot of stuff on Facebook. And to me, that's not the platform where, you know, where I'm with my friends and my family. That's, I'm, that's not for work. It's for me to talk about politics, the environment, you know, uh, laugh, share jokes, share, share outrage. But then I've got a professional platform on Facebook where I do the professional stuff. Mm -hmm. So you've got to be really targeted in where, you, where you're going to be. It's not appropriate to do everything that you do everywhere. I'm more tame on LinkedIn, but over the years I've gotten less tame than what I started out with. I was a lot more formal at the beginning. Um, but the most important thing is be focused, be on the appropriate platform for your audience. And it's not where you want to be, it's where they are. So if you have a customer base, you've got to be very targeted and, and go to them. Customers don't come to us anymore. Um, and the other thing is, just be yourself like you know people buy authenticity mm -hmm. I mean, it's funny you're calling me the authenticity queen which is funny but um what i mean i <clears throat> people say it to me a lot and i'm like what what does that mean why why do people see me as that and not everybody is that and you know there's a scene at the beginning of shrek with um shrek and donkey walking through the field with the flowers and um donkey saying you've got to peel off those onion layers to get to get back to your core self and that's to me all authenticity is, is getting rid of those layers of society's ideas and values and family influences and all that stuff and sort of working out who you are without external input so that you can then just remember who you are because, you know, as parents, we see our kids, they come into the world who they are and then we, we shape that. Do we shape it so that they put layers on and stop being authentic? So <laughs> authenticity is... It's a, it's a struggle because it's a very, very personal thing. It's a very introspective thing. And I find a lot of people aren't willing to do that. Um, so, but more, sorry. Yeah. Which is for a lot of people, it's a struggle because of course, if I'm going to be on LinkedIn, I have to look professional. I have to be professional. And then you tell me I have to be authentic. Yeah, and you can be authentically professional. Which is, you know, what does my customer want? So it's, it's kind of... I'm getting pulled in different direction. You know, I must yeah. be professional. I must do what the customer wants, but I must be myself. Yep. But, but you, you, who, you, who, you, who you are is a great example. Why do you have to be any different anywhere? Because, you know, you, you're fine. I mean, trust me, I, I, I'm more at risk of being unprofessional on professional platforms. Um, but you've got to be yourself. And, you know, like, you know, I swear. Um, I, don't, I don't apologize for that. I, I think the key thing in life, because this goes beyond social media, is be yourself everywhere. And sure, you need to tone yourself down a little bit in some situations, but you're still fundamentally being yourself. 
So when I sit with my grandmother, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, drop an F-bomb, for example, right? So it's, you know, it's about, you've got to have the, a little bit of, you know, self-awareness of the situation that you're in, which is something that we teach our kids as well, right? But yeah, just, um, just be yourself. Like, it's, it's so much easier because if you're not, it's like you don't remember who you are in every situation you put yourself in. And, and so then, and I think that's one of the reasons that people don't necessarily trust people when they're not being truly authentic. So, you know, give it a go. You'll, you'll see where people ricochet back from you if it's too much. And, and then, you know, if you need to temper it down a little bit because we've got bad sides to ourselves and we've got good sides to ourselves. We all have the, the yin and the yang inside, right? So, you know, if there's too much of the uh, darkness coming through, maybe you're not going to make friends and influence people. But I don't know, just, it's, I, to me, it's, it's one of those things. I don't know how to tell people to do it. You just, you just do it, right? Um, and you will win because trust is the biggest issue that we're facing today. People don't trust. They don't trust governments. They don't trust business. They don't trust charities. They don't trust anyone anymore. So the more real you can be, the better it is. And then the, the other thing is do not outs outsource yourself. I am so frustrated by this frustrated by this whole business model where people are outsourcing their social leadership presence. And I'm like, how? Like, outsource the accounting, outsource all these other things that bring no value, but you, the person, you can't outsource that. Um, and because the, the whole the web's just full of noise um, and it's inauthentic noise because people aren't even owning their own voice. And, and senior leaders as well, like where we see level executives in the biggest companies in the world, they're doing their own voice. That's part of my deal when they work with me. If you want to work with me, it's on the grounds that you do it yourself. This outsourcing malarkey, it's just filling the world with just so much intense noise, which turns sensible people away. So, I don't know, there's a couple of points. It's good points. Um, actually, I was going to like let Guan talk about it because, I mean, obviously you have been in advertising and obviously, you know, advertising is all about outsourcing, right? Um, people outsource to you so that you can package it for them so that mm. you can get your branding out. I mean, what do you think about that? Yeah, um, I think um, when you sort of advertise yourself or when you talk about yourself, I think what Andre is talking about to be authentic is easy because obviously it's you are accountable to yourself. But I think when you're advertising for brand or you're advertising for company, it's not so easy because, you know, sometimes what they say is not what they mean. And advertising is also a form of, you know, sometimes trying to sell something which the consumers don't need. So for me, you know, my, my background before going to advertising was, you know, um, creativity, whether it's creativity um, creating on print or in um, radio on, or on um, in a video. You know, when we were... I guess when we were starting out with from the business, from when we started out in the business of advertising, the, the film was what we had to deal with. So we shot everything on film. And I think that's something maybe some of us can relate to where we had to splice our film and everything was done pretty um, authentic in a sense. Over the years, it, it went on to VHS, then obviously it went on to digital, then it went into you know, uh, what we see today. So there's a progression of how film technology has started to evolve in terms of the technology uh, in terms of the different formats so we only had to deal with um you know um movies so we had cinema advertisement and then we had television advertisement and those were the only forms of video advertisement that we had to use um, creativity but i guess now over the years you look at um you know there's mobile there's tv still the cinema there's outdoor digital there is um, iPad, um, iPad um, video. There's so many, there's multiple screens that we have to deal with. So sometimes, you know, the, the content or the format needs to be um, created for each different um, platform. So. But at the end of the day, I mean, creativity on video is about still attracting, you know, in terms of the stories that you tell. Creativity on video is still about engaging, finding engaging stories. Um, finding finding content that's relevant for the, the target market. I mean, you you will notice too that there are a lot of movies out there that sometimes are doing really 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 well, and sometimes they're not doing really well. It all boils down to the the way the stories are told. I think coming I mean, what uh, Andre is saying, the authenticness in terms of how the stories are told. I mean, nobody wants to hear happily ever after anymore, right? So I think in terms of how people want to hear stories, it's evolved a lot, and how 
we need to get people involved in the way we tell our story so that it used to be a one way. So, you know, video and content used to be one way. Now it's two ways. There is interaction. Now you've got people commenting. If they don't like what you say or don't like what they see, they'll talk about, you know, really bad stuff. So I think we're living in a digital world where videos are being judged. I mean, we are judged quite constantly. We are also, um, we, we, we need to create content that is interesting and make sure that the, the right platform is used. If not, you know, you could create something horizontal or vertical or whatever platform that does not reach to the right audience. Yeah. But I mean, the, a lot of the platforms you mentioned, like movies, television, I mean, it's not something that somebody like me, for example, I mean, somebody who's mm. trying to make an impact um, or, or small businesses even will be able to access. There is just no way that I'm making, um, you know, an, an advertisement for a movie. So what would you suggest as platforms that can actually help people? Yeah. Wow. So, I mean, yeah, I think, you know, like, like I mentioned before, I mean, it used to be the expensive media like TV and cinema, but look at today. I mean, a Facebook ad costs like what, $2 to get it promoted or sponsored. So, and everything is almost practically free. So is then the organic content that's, that allows you, that allows your video to be spread virally if you don't want to, you know, to pay the extra amount to sponsor the, your, your content. So, I mean, when we talk about content, um, I guess, I don't know whether Julian wants to jump in to talk about, you know, content, you know, um, what kind of content do you think would, you know, be organic, you know, be able to have this viral effect? Yeah, uh, definitely. So, uh, look, there are so many key words there that I want to jump in uh, on. Mm -hmm. uh, jump in, yes. So, what, uh, I'm going to give you a couple of reasons why I don't think uh, the packaging is that important. Uh, I'm going to give you a couple of reasons why I do think it is. And then I want to give you what I reckon is uh, my biggest impact tip uh, that, yeah, uh, and we'll do it right here. So um, three P's, patterns, price, and practicality. Um, I've been doing this for 40 years now. And uh, <laughs> it's, uh, I've seen, and you know, when you look at something for so long, you see patterns evolve. Yeah. And I can tell you of so many times I remember back in TV when ratings would start to go down low and you'd sit at the, uh, and in the end of January meetings, you're starting the year for a program. They go, mm. Oh, Oh, the ratings are low. What are we going to do? We'll change the packaging. That was always the first thing they'd say. All mm. right. So uh, we'll go from making it all looking very glossy and slick and we'll go to a grungy look. You know, and it'll just be a little bit out of focus or, or we'll start to do, you know, a bit of shaky cam or a bit of snap zooms here and there. And I would always sit back with, with amusement. I go, no, that's not, you know, like, that's, that's wrong. That's not going to yeah. do anything. Work on the content. The content yeah. is king because it doesn't matter how it's packaged. If your content is so interesting and we, and, and, and we, we know this, if, if, if we were to read a book, oh, that's a good book. Read, read that one. If we were to read a book and you know, like, and you were going, oh, this is really good, really book, good. And you got to the last page and the last page was gone. You would be so frustrated. And then if, so, if, if, if somebody handed you this torn up bit of paper, you wouldn't care because you were so engaged in that content. It was so important. You wouldn't worry. Like, I mean, content is all, if the content is good. So to me, the focus is on making our content good. And that's hard for us to do. That's very hard for us to do because we are now engaged in this world where we're expected to, to put this mass of content out there. Uh, price. Uh, we are now in the attention economy uh, now. Um, and- Thank you for interrupting just a, just a short moment, which is, you talked about content, but yeah. what- what I thought about is that if I don't have that much content, you know, and I'm going out there to compete with the world, yeah. um, what do I do? I mean, Andre just asked me the authentic, <clears throat> and I authentically am not, you know, I don't know, I'm not well, Einstein, you know, I don't have I, that. You know, what can, do I, I do? can I just jump in here because it's, it, yeah. it's, it's kind of like looping it all together, but the, the biggest challenge I, I find with people is they don't know their starting point, right? And so they get obsessed with the tools, the tools are just a mechanism for getting your message out. You're not competing with the whole world. None of us are. We're, we're sharing a message that has a specific audience. Now you, that audience could be the whole world 
or it could be 10 people, right? So the, 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 it's, don't, don't think within the context of competition, think in the, in the context of de delivering value to the audience that you want to reach. If you're consistently delivering value to your audience and be very specific about who they are, versus the majority of people, I believe, just go out there saying, I want to say this, I want to say this, they've got a megaphone, right? Listen to me, listen to me, aren't I great? And unfortunately, a lot of the, the sort of popular, famous people are very megaphony today, right? Mm. But focus on what you've got to say and talk to the audience that you want to reach. And eventually, if you're doing a good enough job, they're going to come to you. The, the, the platform you use, it's totally up to you because it's got to be something you're comfortable with. I like writing. I know I have to do more video and I am doing slowly, slowly, slowly but surely. Mm. But the important thing is that your audience, who are they? speak to them, solve their problem, make them laugh, whatever the incentive is. Sorry. Because, that's just no, a, that's good. That's good. These are all keys in because I think what we need to be doing, and when I say we, I mean, uh, I'm talking about people who are running personal brands. Uh, I'm talking if you've got a small, yeah. a small business, is that we need to move away from this viral mentality, this viral yeah. mindset that we're talking about videos and people all go, well, how do I make a viral video? Yeah. You can't do it now. You no. might luck into that, right? But yeah. the competition is there. It is so, um, it's so expensive now to pay for people's attention. Do you know the, 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 one, the, the, the one industry that has risen faster than any other industry in, in the US? It's, it's advertising. It's right in the last 25 years, it's about nine or 10 times gone you know, higher than, than the, the, the CPI because you have to pay to get people's attention now. Mm. It's so expensive. Now, as a small person, we can't compete with that. There's no way that, you know, when, um, um, you know, Guan, um, you know, uh, has his, you know, does his uh, uh, mm. agency videos. We, it's, 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 it's a different ball game. So yeah. we have to have a different, almost a paradigm shift. And yeah. so what I argue is that we go away from this viral mindset into a service mindset. Yeah. And that service mindset is to think, who is my customer, the one person? So when I make videos, I quite literally often make videos for one person because mm. it's a person that I've targeted. I've gone away now from making videos for likes to making videos for leads. Mm. And that's, that's, that's where I'm focused. And to, to me, it's the only way I can win because I can't win this new game playing by the old rules. Mm -hmm. And the old rules 10 years ago when I started on, online um, and I got my YouTube channel with 30 million views, the rules were different then. Mm. It was a lot easier. It is, it is nigh on impossible. To, to do that now. And so it depends what, what your business model is. Mm -hmm. If your business model is to make money from lots of <clears> views <throat> and you want to focus all your time on making real, you know, trying to make viral videos, well, that's fine. I mean, that's a business model. But for, I'm guessing, most of the people on this call, that's not their, their business model. And you, you, you've, you've got to stop this thinking. It's very confusing. Um, and I think it's going to lead you down the wrong path. Yeah. So I just want to check whether Guan wants to object to any of this, you know, like, you know, platform is not involved, you know, no advertising, no bar. Yeah. I'm sure he must be like, so, I, um, yeah. Um, in terms of, um, obviously, content to content, I mean, I think what Julian and Andre is saying, I don't disagree. But what I maybe would like to pose as a question is that when you have two content, which is really, really good, and one content, sort of has this um, new way of looking at it, sometimes that might pop up. So whether how long that will pop up is it's a different story. So I think right now, even with people having new shiny toys to play, it's an opportunity to bounce onto the bandwagon to get your message um, across quicker. So, you know, I'm, I'm, you know so for example, if you've got two wonderful content and one uses a content based on a new platform, for example, if the world tomorrow creates this hologram, okay, and hologram is accessible to around the world, and someone came up with a wonderful hologram storytelling that's wonderful, that content with that platform would rise um, as opposed to maybe a, 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 you know, a real strong content. So I'm, I'm just saying that sometimes it's not, um, I think content is still really, really important, but jumping onto a bandwagon where things seem interesting might get you ahead of the curve, but you need to continue doing it because when you stop doing
good content, then everything will fall apart. I'll just yeah, say, I mean, oh, sorry, sorry. I just, no, I, just, to... I just think the rate of change of technology is too rapid today that I don't think the competitive advantage of that exists anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, I think 10 years ago, yeah, um, you know, something would stay embedded within society for, you know, a good two, three, maybe even five years, but now right. it's months. And okay. so, yeah, I mean, it's good to be trendy and on the ball, but it, if, you, if your message is still weak, it's still weak. Yeah, but, but Andre, so can I just say something? So I just came up from a pitch and um, so, you know, I've been selling uh, vertical storytelling. Yeah. The only reason why I got the job was vertical storytelling. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, 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 eventually, uh, but eventually you're going to have to brand away yeah, no, no, from that correct, because yeah. it, will be too, but, it will be everywhere, right? Yeah, correct. So, but, but what I'm trying to say is the content needs to be critical in terms of how you tell the story within that platform. And yeah. once you get that, I mean, once you're, I guess once you're good at that, then obviously we need to move on to some, something else. So yeah. I'm not suggesting that vertical storytelling is the, is the end. I think it's just a journey towards different ways to tell stories within yeah. whatever content you have. I think, I, think you've hit, I, I think you've hit or maybe even created a really good trend. Yeah. And I ride the wave, right? But yeah. um, yeah. but be prepared for it to end sooner yeah. than you think. I think that's what's happening. So, these so you know, just just yeah. to key in on on that, it is going to end sooner than we think. Because mm -hmm. I mean, my whole business model for the next five years is based yeah. around me promoting shooting on you know the smartphone. Right. Here, here, here's the reality. This is only a short term solution. Now, I don't know how long we're all going to have these in our hands, mm -hmm. but it's actually not that long because we're going to go into uh, augmented re reality. Yes. We're going to be wearing um, wearables, mm -hmm. yeah. so we'll glasses, have glasses yeah. on, which will have you know pop up displays. We'll, mm -hmm. wear, we'll wear jewelry, which will all talk to it mm -hmm. somehow. So, you know, now vertical video works really well for this. But when, uh, vertical video, when, when this goes and, and we go back to a pair of glasses, yes. then, 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 then we go back to 16 True. by 9. True. So the platform and the aspect ratio, um, I find people get so hung up on this. Mm. And they actually argue it. They go, I mean, <laughs> it's just entertaining to you know, listen, you know, uh, watch people argue this. You know, no, I will only ever shoot in 16 by 9. And you know, you know, I go, well... Who's your audience? Mm. Who's your audience? Because if if yeah. if if I see an opportunity to uh, talk to a younger audience, bang, I'm making vertical videos. Right? Mm. But then, if next week I find a more traditional audience, well, for some reason they need this, mm. I go back to go back to this. What's the problem? It's it's mm. it's not hard to shoot, uh, you know, for the particular platform. Mm. But there's there's one other point to that, which I, it's, it's a really good thing point about the audiences, young versus old, right? So, mm -hmm. um, I've been working with senior level executives in big companies for years, right? I have never seen one of them watch a video to learn something, but I constantly watch watch them read extensive content. That's how they educate themselves. Mm -hmm. So, being really aware of who your audience is and how they take on board information. You know, the, you know, one of the stats is 80% of all people will be, 80% um, of all social media content will be video. Well, I don't think so. Um, I, I'm not seeing it play out. I know people in the video market who are saying it's not, it's not playing out as well. Because um, once again, what, what's the appropriate tool for the audience that you're going to reach? And um, older generations still actually enjoy a good read or a nice white paper or something more mm -hmm. in-depth and more complex. So that's, it. that's the short versus long term. You know, this idea, you've got to be short, you can't be long. Well, that's not true. If it's a value, you're going to have an audience. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, we, I think we, we're focused, we, we spend too much time focusing on the wrong things. Um, we're, not, we're not thinking about the audience where, you know, that's where you can't get too obsessed with the technology, right? Because that's a distraction from the message. The message is what matters. Um, so that's, yeah. Yeah. And it's um, like, yeah. Yeah. So um, I just want to say, for example, um, you know, where the platform plays a big role is that a lot of people are using horizontal tech, um, mentality to try and do a vertical platform, which is, they, they, they can't manage to do it. So a lot of clients came to me saying, I've got editors that cannot shoot, uh, cannot edit vertical. So while, you know, yeah, they can't edit vertical because it's a different, it's a different setup. So when I, um, when I did the first Kit Kat commercial, which, you, which I presented the last time, you know, the, the one which is about the, the video uh, conference, you know, the one looking up, looking down, it took me eight hours to get it right because the editor couldn't get his head around 
editing uh, top and bottom for me. So it took a long time. So what, what I'm saying is that while the content is important, understanding the platform in terms of how your story is being told is yeah. not being um, addressed. So once you understand how you tell the story in a vertical format, then you're able to tell better stories. But so if, if there is a new technology, I think people don't spend the time to understand the technology to tell the story in that platform because horizontal uh, format, while it's good, it's just one, you know, one way of telling the story. Yep. And I want to jump in on that because that's exactly I mean, uh, w what you're saying is so true, understanding those yep. platforms. Now, that was an eye opener to watch you present uh, at the APSC. Uh, because I had not considered uh, mm -hmm. the different flow that would happen, yes. the energy flow yeah. that would happen when you turn the screen vertical. So yes. now in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, so when I'm going to get vision for, say, my uh, next speaking reel, I'm thinking now, what do I need to get here to be able to create create a, ver a horizontal yes. and also, exactly. also at the same time, I can have a vertical. So exactly. I can have two. Yes, and so so that that's already percolating through yeah. through my head. Yeah, um, and 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 I think this is the way that we all will need to think, and it's easier. <clears throat> I mean, you know, I've 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 had more experience, and mm -hmm. um, uh, so I mean, my mind can go, you know, to to that place. But you know, if if you're listening and you're starting out, um, I think some simple things. I mean, you know, just you know, like a a little bit of you know learning we can do right sure. now um, is that. Uh, you know, you're probably asking, well, which format should um, I, I shoot in? Well, I'll tell you what I do as a general rule of thumb is, as a safety backup is I shoot 16 by nine. So that means it's horizontal, but in, I keep my main information in the center square. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that means then that I can upload that onto Instagram or upload it onto LinkedIn in a mm -hmm. square fo format. Right. And it's still going to um, uh, be solid <clears throat> and, and usable. But yep. um, I, I keep my widescreen as a master because this content might be want to be used <clears throat> by business. Now, when you look at all the stats, you know, they say that four out of five things that we do on our smartphones are going mm. to be video based. That may be true, but it's not true in business. Mm, business yeah. is still primarily desktop. So okay. when you send something for someone to, to um, uh, view in, in business, um, you've got to <clears throat> think about, about horizontal uh, right. as, as, as well. So again, well, I mean, well, Julian, I'd, I'd suggest that might that that research doesn't really apply to Asia because a lot of a lot of countries in Asia, it's the emerging technology is mobile phones. Mm. Uh, it's the first technology for most people, but also in businesses like government, Singapore government, um, that the, you don't have access to social media on your on your desktop. So a lot more is actually happening on phones in Asia than than I think most other markets around the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sorry, I wasn't suggesting that on social media, I'm suggesting what you can do then is repurpose that content right. into maybe some sort of educational, mm -hmm. uh, you know, con content, which will be, you know, consumed in the office. But whether it's in the office or not, it's just about um, thinking that it, it has to be multi formatted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, one, one of the things that... Um... Is it easy? Because even one just said that, you know, a lot of people who are professional video editors cannot edit a, a horizontal to a vertical. So, yeah, I mean, he's course, talking I about, com he's talking about format, complex right? editing there. Yeah, but yeah. Not easy to, I mean, for what you and I need. Yeah, yeah. I, I think if you're doing the, um, but, but Julian, even trying to get them to think vertically and getting things in the center, sometimes they might not um, get it right. For example, I mean, this is just a bit of education. You know, when you shoot vertical, you can't do quick pants. It's really, really tough. So they try to do, you know, up and downs a bit and try to keep it very, very still. The other thing that um, maybe it's also a uh, misconception is that nobody watch a vertical video for more than 20 minutes. So vertical videos last um, about three minutes to four minutes. So, you know, IGTV has now gone horizontal because they realize that holding this phone for a long time for vertical video does not work. So I think there is a place for horizontal, which is a much longer content but these are much more shorter content for vertical video. Yeah. So and about, it's more we like are advertising and all sort of awareness kind of videos rather than real like content. Sorry? It's, it's the beginning of your question. Right. Like 
a minute or two? Is it more awareness, you know, advertising content? No, no. Rather than you know? No, no. I, I think, sorry, it could be anything you want, right? I mean, whether it's promoting a book or, I, I mean, maybe vertical videos. Um, but by the way, you know, TikTok, I mean, TikTok, which my, my daughter has just started to follow, is just silly music videos of people dancing and stuff. That is really, really engaging. And I think, you know, what's interesting with all the filters and all the stickers that's, that's come with the apps, it's made it really engaging. So I think people... Um, I think you can, you can advertise anything. So, I mean, I don't think it's about advertisement. I think it's just about whatever people want to watch. I think we need to take the word advertising out of the conversation, yeah. to be honest, because I think advertising is something completely different to what we're talking about. Sure. Do you guys agree? Um, um, it's just a, a frame of mind, but I can yeah. I'll just talk about content. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, I guess what I use is in terms of marketing. So, because if you're telling me that you know, um, this vertical video is more like a couple of minutes long. Uh, mm -hmm. Would it be more an awareness, um, awareness raising video rather than uh, something that's longer, 20, 30 minutes where I have more, you know, solid or more um, meaty content in it? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, there was just a lot of reasons. I mean, music videos are now turning into vertical and they're about maybe five minutes long. So I think content, which is interesting, people will still hang on to, but I'm just sh sharing that for horizontal videos, it's better as a longer format because yeah. even TV has now shifted to horizontal. So I think there's learning from a vertical screen of what you need to do. And there's also learning from a horizontal screen. But in the end, I think the content is still the king or queen. Yeah. Exactly. But, 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 and the other, th the other thing, Serene, I think yeah. probably you, you and I are more in the um, uh, inexperience on the video front. But I mean, to me, Naz Daily with his one minute, right? That one minute entertaining, educational, uh, liquidity, deep, you know, around the world. Um, look at the way Gary V is, it, it uses video. He really appeals to his audience. There's a lot of Gary V wannabes, but, um, you know, it's very him, it's very real. Um, I think we've got to get, if, you, if you're at the beginning, I mean, the hardest place is where do I start? So back, back to what do you want to share? Um, but then just go and look around. Go and look at people that inspire you. Um, I don't think everyone should be on video. I think some people are terrible on video. It's just not, it's not their natural uh, forte and, and they look awkward and, um, you know, and maybe they'll never get natural. But at the same time, at the beginning, you're not going to be natural anyway. Mm. I mean, Julian's been in the broadcasting industry for a million years, right? Um, you know, I'm sure he's seen people who come in at the beginning, their first day in front of a camera and they're, 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 they're terrible, right? So it takes time, it takes practice. But you know how I started? I used to send videos to my husband when I traveled on WhatsApp. So, he, so I got used to watching myself on video, but it never went anywhere other than my husband. So just start doing it, start practicing it, get a couple of tools, you don't have to spend a lot of money. And then, and then just get going in whatever way makes you feel comfortable. But that first video you post, you're gonna be nervous. You're gonna, you're gonna, it's gonna be a terrifying moment. Most people, like, it, Trust me, the most senior people in business are terrified too, mm -hmm. right? This is yeah, not a I natural thing. We want to learn about this, you know, um, appearance and actually seeing ourselves on video and being actually attacked for appearance as well. Well, I mean, it doesn't matter whether you're a, 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 a soccer mum or the CEO of a bank, uh, you know, you, everyone suffers the same, um, you know, um, self-consciousness. Mm -hmm. uh, your, your, your work status doesn't come into it uh, at, at all. And quite often the people who are higher up the totem pole uh, fear, uh, feel like that they have more to lose. Uh, yeah. They feel that, you know, what comes out of their mouth should be more perfect. And they actually stumble and um, mm. uh, through the process uh, a lot more than um, you know, some, somebody who doesn't have that much to lose. Mm -hmm. um, I just had a point there. I, I wanted to key in, um, but go on. I've forgotten it. <laughs> Well, no, I was going to say that that point about the senior leaderships, right? So one of my observations is they've been, been, they've been behind these protective PR walls all of their careers. And so everything is shaped. The message is perfected before they go live. And, the, the, and so a lot of the MBA schools still to this day don't have proper social media, media training for executives. Um, and, they, and so they're still behind the PR walls. But what's happening is you'll see a company go through crisis. And the first thing that the company does is send out a press release quoting the CEO. Mm. What, the, what the community wants is a genuine statement from mm. the CEO talking from their heart, saying this is what I did wrong, mm. right? Um, and so the expectation of the customer has changed. 
but the leadership isn't necessarily changing in line with that. Mm. 60% of Fortune 500 CEOs have no social media presence at all. They're not, they're not, they don't exist in the place where their customers exist today. So they don't know how to talk to their customers. And that's why you've got to get your senior leadership actively embracing social media, getting online, having a point of view, getting it wrong, making a mistake. I mean, if you're a public company, there's certain limitations that you have to abide by, but not that many. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just an excuse. Mm -hmm. it's, they're, they're scared. Julian mentioned something about the fastest way to catch um, your audience attention or like the, the oh best. the fastest way here I'll show you okay now this is here this is this is what 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 I do um, almost every day this is how I when I say I make videos for one per, uh, person this is what a lot of my day involves making videos for one people a uh, one person and what are we all like I mean what's the number one thing that gets our attention I'll show you what it is the magic is it no my name, personalizations. A person's name. Oh, so great. this is so. You got my attention, Julian. What's that? <laughs> you got my attention. Got his attention, but not me and Andrew. <laughs> so <laughs> this is so. This is this is this is how I make videos. I make a, a short one, one and a half minute video to someone, and I connect out and I go, hey, you know, uh, you reached out to me on LinkedIn. I looked at your profile, saw that you weren't using video. Is there, you know, any way that you know, I, I can help? Now, when I make these videos, so there are platforms out there now and you can get onto them for free. One is called Vidyard. You can get a free account on that and you can make these videos. And what it does is it takes the first three seconds and makes a little GIF, a GIF mm -hmm. file. So it's, it looks like a movie, but it's not really. It's one of those, it goes in a little loop for about three seconds. So I start my videos just waving like that. So that gets embedded in their email when they open up their email, they see this little picture and me going like that and they see their name. Do you think nice. they open that, that email? The open rates on these are like, you know, astronomical. Oh, so great. if you want to get, you know, we're talking about what matters to people, mm -hmm. they matter and making a connection with, with, with that one Brilliant. person. You know, listen, I've, 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 I've heard you. I empathize with, with, with your problem. Uh, so, you know, may, maybe you can use this. And I've got this little system here. It's my board that goes up and down. So <laughs> <I> can... <laughs> it's brilliant. Nice. I like it. <laughs> brilliant. And since we're on like tips and tricks, um, like Guan and Andre, do you all have like the one thing that you need to do to get impact? I think, well, I think to, to me, the most important thing is turning up on a regular basis and being consistent. Um, a lot of people give it a go. This isn't a short. This isn't a short-term game. It's a long-term game. You've got to be in it, um, being driven by real passion. So, and combining your heart and mind. But the most important thing is make a commitment and show up. And it, I'm not talking every day. I'm not talking mm. overdoing it. Um, I think a lot of people are overdoing it. They think they have to overdo it. Um, there's too much noise there. If you do too much, you're asking too much from your audience. So it's better to do less and to be to be world class than to do too much because People just can't give you that much time. They can't, not anymore. There's too much going on. I mean, in, in, in my business so far, I mean, the only way to stand out is to study your competitors and then do something completely opposite. So, you know, when BBH came up with their tagline, when others zig, you zag. So you got to do something, even though it's completely different, uh, I think the standout factor is a lot higher. So that, that's how I'd probably try and do it. I see that Sheila's asking there, you know, can you churn out too much content? Because, you know, there's this requirement to post every, every day. I mean, if you certainly listen to Gary V, you know, he suggests you should, you should be putting out, you know, massive amounts of, of uh, content. And that's really hard. It's really hard to do. So as a tip, Sheila, what we're doing here now, you should be doing, you should be creating your own online uh, panels and the, uh, on something like Zoom here, it's <clears throat> automatically recorded for you. And then you can use that and then just cut that up into segments and then put that up online. So you could have a chat with someone for half an hour and get 20 little one, you know, one and a half minute segments out of that. Uh, so it's a very easy way to create content. Mm. And the, the, the other thing with, uh, with what Sheila said is I, I do think you can create too much content. And I know that people who are working in a business environment certainly don't have the time to do it. 
And if they do do it, um, their colleagues aren't going to look too kindly on it because not, they will say that you're not doing your job, right? So that's why I always say do less but be brilliant. But if the majority of what you do is sharing other people's content that aligns to the story that you want to be known for, but always with your opinion on top. Um, and also engaging with other people's content, talking to people, uh, asking questions. When people send out a great video that you really enjoy and, you, and, you know, and it inspires a thought in you, share that observation. I mean, people aren't even participating. Everyone's, everyone's still so silent. Um, and that the biggest success I think you have with building a, a presence is to give, give to other people, help other people be successful, um, be a contributor. I call it the giving economy, but the more you give to other people, the more successful you'll be. Because it's not about you. It's, and, and it's one of the things Julian said earlier, it's, it's about serving your community, be of service, have a service mindset, um, be a cheerleader for the people that you love, that you want to support. And just, you know, just be in it, like be a participator. It, it makes all, all the difference, but it's not about the amount of content you create. It's about the value you put out there into the world. Mm -hmm. uh, here's, um, here's an, oh, um, sorry, Gwen, you go on. No, I was oh, yeah. gonna say, um, we had a few questions on mistakes, like what would be the top one thing or two thing that people often do wrong that detracts from their impact? Uh, it's about, I saw, it's about their audience. Yeah. They, don't, they don't listen to the audience, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so can I, can I just add what Andre is saying and Julian, because you're moving on to another subject. So I think content, a lot of people think that they need to churn content without any care. I think you need to have a strategy in terms of how you churn the content. So whether the strategy is less, you can plan to, you know, for brands that I work on, they plan content for entire year. And how they do it is, for example, they plan seasonal content. So like Christmas, which we know it's coming, what is the content you talk about Christmas, Hari Raya, you know, Chinese New Year. And then you can plan your content around things like, um, you know, in terms of people's birthday. I mean, there is, I think there are tons of, you know, web, um, you can Google in terms of how you can create different content. But I think planning and understanding what um, works in different months and different days actually help to create relevant, interesting content for people to want to be engaged in. I'll give you another idea for content creation. If you were to take, so what, whatever your field is, just say it was customer service, that, 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 that was your gig. Uh, you would take a book that was a classic in customer mm. service, something that came out, you know, 10 or 15 years ago, then take a contemporary book now, something that's out there and get the two. And what you're going to do is you're going to read the two and you're going to have a pad in front of you and you're going to put a column down the center and on one side of the pad, you're going to put yes and, and the other side, you're going to put yes, but. And you're going to mm. read through these books. And when you read something that you agree with, you go yes and, and you add your mm. thoughts on, on top of that. And when there's something you don't agree with, you write yes, but, and you explain your argument there. And you end up with this pad of yes and and yes but nice. and you've got all this content there that then you can uh, put out and you can talk to uh, and it's all relevant because you're saying hey this is you know this is my thoughts on two you know on two classics you know that affect us in our industry and what you're also doing if you're new to this is you're creating your thought leadership because nice. when you take a classic and a new one and then you just go well this is what i think because that's, that's all thought leadership is. Thought yeah. leadership is not creating something new. It's adding to the argument out there. It's putting your personal flavor on, onto it. So that's a, uh, you know, like if you're stuck making content and you want to make it relevant, that's a, a good nice. way to do it. Good one. I think just now I interrupted you, um, Julian. You had like three things, right, uh, that you wanted to do. The second was pricing. And I think just now early on, did I interrupt you? Do you want to finish? Uh, it's sort of all got, it's, 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 it's <laughs> a big tumble dryer now. <laughs> yeah. like the train has left the station. <laughs> can, I, can I just add something to it? The godfather wants to say more. I don't want you on my rooftop. Can I, can I just add to um, Sheila's question, the churn, churning out content? Um, just the word churning. I think if you're churning, then you're, you're never going to do yourself justice. Um, that mindset, you know, there was a time when Google would give you a higher ranking if you were doing something every day. 
that's um, the rankings for content have gone down significantly from every day to once a week, once a month, you know, so that's kind of where now more in the once a month and higher value on longer form content, all that sort of stuff. So um, it shouldn't be a chore. It should be a pleasure because if you really believe in what you're doing and what you're sharing, it should be something that comes from such a deep place that it, there's power in that. And there's a lot of power in that. So I, I'm, and I'm a big believer in that. So while I plan, I'm not talking to consumers, so I don't really care about Christmas or Chinese New Year. I'm not, I never talk about that stuff, but I'm, I'm, I'm consistently talking, answering the questions the customers are asking me. And also sometimes answering the customers, I think they should be asking me, but they're not yet. So, um, and it's always very much driven by the customer, what, where they are, you know, like a typical headline for me is the three things that stop people from building a personal brand. And it's the very specific things, right? So that, that's, that, that's, that's kind of more the mindset that I go in, but it's got to come from the heart. Don't churn. Okay. Can I just, um, um, and, yes. Andrew's yes. asking a question there. He's asking about what's the, what do we think about the value of influences uh, mm -hmm. these, these days? Um, Andrew, what a, a, a thing I find is a lot of people don't start putting content online. They don't start making videos because they also, you know, we suffer the imposter syndrome and we think that we've got nothing to say, that we've got nothing to add. And we compare ourselves against the so-called gurus, the so-called influencers. What I've noticed is quite often sometimes that people who have risen to the top of their field are too far removed and they've lost the beginner mindset. And I actually find it stronger for me when I'm learning something. I look for people who are just a few steps ahead of me, mm. who uh, have got the current knowledge, they're in the current mindset, uh, and to me that they provide more valuable content. Mm. So um, I, 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 I actually go away from influences a lot when, when I'm looking for people. And so if anyone's out there thinking, you know, like, oh, I've got nothing to say, actually, actually you have because there's a lot of people who want to listen to you. And remember the seven and a half billion people on the planet. Yeah. You just need a wafer thin slice of people who are going to listen to your voice and go, Oh, I like listening to you. Yeah. I like the yeah. cut of your jib and they're not going to listen to other people. So um, don't, don't hold back on putting this out there. Can I give you an example? Her name's Serene. Serene just started putting videos out um, about two weeks ago. And I think it's done three or four. And I've been watching them and I have noticed an improvement in mm. those three and four, four videos. Because I can just see Serena's getting comfortable with the technology, just with the standing there. She's getting comfortable with herself. And that's happened in what? A period of 14 days. Yeah. Can I, can I, can I add to the influencer conversation? Because I think it's a really important part. I think a lot of people look at influencers and want to be like them, right? And so there's very different types of influencers. B2C all the way through to B2B, right? So someone who wants to talk about artificial intelligence that goes to the top of their field is a different person to a Kim Kardashian that's putting on clothes and getting $5,000 per, of, of, per an Instagram tweet, tweet or no, what do you call it, post, sorry. Um, but um, if you are going after a B2B audience, the reality is they're not gonna be influenced by those sort of people, right? Um, if you want to become an influencer, be very clear about what you want to become. Um, the influencer market is massively growing, but at the same time, it's also massively losing credibility. Uh, you know, the, there's more rules and regulations coming with it. I mean, one of the things I talk about is employees as influencers, employees as advocates, because they're much more genuine. So people want to hear from, from real people real opinions. They're not really interested in all this nonsense. If you look at the trust research, the influence is sitting outside of our circle of trust, not inside. So I think the influencer bubble, I think it's not too far away from bursting um, because we are, we're, we're, we're in a world starved of people to follow that we trust. And that's why Gary Vee does well because he comes across as very genuinely authentic. Mm -hmm. And you know, I mean, he's not my cup of tea, but I don't mind what he does and I don't mind his message. Um, but he's not for everyone, right? But the influencer thing is an ambition. I would suggest don't make it an ambition. Just go out there and be the best you can be and offer advice. Um, and if you become an influencer, great. But it should never be an ambition. And I know it is for a lot of people, but there's a lot of people, make, it's like YouTube stars, only a handful are making money out of it. Mm -hmm. 
And um, yeah, there's a yeah. question from Sheila about practicality that's addressed to Julian. Uh, Julian, apparently you mentioned practicality and then said nothing about it. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure of what, what did, did I say something What's about practicality? Yes, Is it one of your P's? I think pricing and practicality. Practicality was the third point. The three P's, maybe they want to know about the, the other two, Julian. Yes. Oh, what the, you oh, one. Oh, that, well, well, yeah, again, that, that went in, into the watch about the, we were talking about vertical video and, and where that's going because what's happening, um, it's not practical. This whole idea that people are going, oh, well, you know, it's all going to go vertical video and we've got to shoot vertical. Cinemas are not going to rebuild cinemas yeah. into vertical cinemas. Mm -hmm. Sports broadcasting cannot shoot in anything else but widescreen because teams play on a, a, a field and they oppose each other like that. You need the wide screen um, to put in that. Uh, link, LinkedIn Live, when, when you look at LinkedIn Live, which is being run out with beta testers in the States at the moment, it uses a 16 by nine at the top of the screen and then all the comments go un underneath here. So yeah. it, it is, I mean, it's just back to this argument that we have to have multiple, um, you know, think about multiple formats all the time. I was just giving some practical examples. So just understand that, you know, this, this is unsolvable. We, it, it is a cultural clash because uh, there are going to be people that Guan is making um, his uh, advertising videos for who will do nothing but hold it vertically. And if it's not vertical videos, swipe, they're gone. You're, you're, you're gone. You're not going to change that again. So you, what you've got to do is understand your, your audience. Your market. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and look, okay. Practical. Do you know about switcher? This is a good one. So there's an app called switcher S W I T C H E R. I'll open it up for you. And this is wonderful. So what we're doing here now, I'll just, I'll come in closer. <laughs> uh, so you can, you can literally, I, I, I'm sort of doing this back to front here, but you can put all these inputs in here and mm -hmm. you can, as, as you go, you can, <laughs> do your own like little edit and studio record. So I'd, I'd, I'd had the selfie video here and I'd be talking and you can put in, um, you know, videos, just play them in, play them out, go back to you. And you, so you can do a live broadcast without editing and it's just recorded. Yes. Uh, it's, it's, it's a wonderful tool. So talking about making content, mm. wonderful tool to quickly make uh, content. Mm. And it's, it's so good. It's free. Mm. Yeah, but, but can I can I just add? You make it look easy, but I, I I've tried those things and it's not easy. And so if you're like me and a bit of a tech dunce, don't let it turn you off doing it. Like just get started, and hopefully you can work it out, right? But and it's not you know it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not easy, but it's not hard. Uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, because just a like, practice. Like, one of those things is beyond me. Introduce me this kind master, and yes, it's a very kind master because. What happens is I was trying to make um, a video for Guan become, go from a horizontal to a vertical to make my point. And I tried everything, okay? I tried everything, iMovie, whatever it is. In the end, I like called Julian, Julian said, okay, try this time master. I did it in 10 minutes waiting to go and see the doctor outside mm -hmm. on my phone. And I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh, I should have learned this from Julian earlier. Please, please, so, like, you have to choose. I was the rest of the list of apps, Julian. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Oh, sorry. Uh, was that a question to me? <laughs> <laughs> over to you, Julian. <laughs> yes, over to you, Julian. What's the question? What, so, what was the question? question? No, question? I'm like, um, no, what I was going to say is, Julian, um, my, maybe what you can do is put together a list of these apps after the panel discussion. And yeah, sure. Whoever has registered, like, you know, if you want to do video editing, use this. If you want to make little GIFs, use this and so on and so forth. And I think a lot of these are information that somebody like me who's an outsider, I just don't know about it. You know, I, I only know the usual like iMovie, which is on my computer. Yeah. So if I do some of these things, uh, I think it would really save me a lot of time. And I, I mean, I, I, I think an important point to make is this is not getting harder. It's getting easier. Uh, user interfaces just, I mean, even in the last five years, how much more intuitive this is. I wear this is in five years. 
I'm really excited. It's going to be so much easier for us to, um, you know, create videos with us in them. And also when we're talking about this, and you're talking about content, you're going to find all these apps out there at the moment, which go, um, uh, all you have to do is type in your words and keyword and, and we'll make this, you know, really flashy looking little video for you. Don't do that. That's going to get you nowhere because all that is, is noise out yeah. there because everyone else who's going, ah, I couldn't be bothered, you know, trying to master, uh, you know, um, you know, making a video and, and putting my own, you know, personal stamp on it. They're all doing that. And you're just competing against this noisy, noisy marketplace. Yeah. Uh, so it comes back to, I think, you know, uh, what Andrea was saying is that authenticity is, is really key these days. Mm. I mean, Julian, I think the, I mean, your point about, um, you know, these apps, I mean, there are a lot more apps giving people the option to create, um, you know, like filters or um, interesting, expensive. So there is this um, desktop, des uh, desktop online sort of tool that gives you high production values for obviously very low cost. And that really gets the eyeballs. But I think because if everybody gets into the same tool then you're left with the same um, content so i think creating new authentic content is still the way to go and you know this is a crazy thing we're, we're all out there desperately seeking something that's different and yet we're born that way you know there's no one like us there's no one with our mix of you know <clears throat> chemistry and and you know nature versus nurture mm -hmm. uh you know we we've 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 cracked the code in a sense mm -hmm but we keep looking elsewhere for, for the answer. So I'm not saying that you put out rubbish, you know, make your videos look a little bit nice. And mm. then, you know, the, gen, the, the general rule of thumb is, this literally is a rule of thumb, mm. is one thumb's worth of um, polish and four fingers worth of authenticity. So mm. when I make videos, it's just a general thing, you know, like, yeah, make it a bit okay, but this is what I concentrate on. Yeah. You know, me trying to you know get the essential me out there. Mm -hmm. I, th I think the, the, the one of the about uh, copyright when using these apps is there any concern about copyrights? If they no, use? they shouldn't. Should you know I mean, if, if they're copyright, they'll be closed down quite immediately because people mm -hmm. start suing. I think I think the most um, I mean one thing I'm also you know people have also asked me is what what makes us different. I mean I know we talk about you know we need to be different, we need to be authentic. I think a lot of people find it hard to discover that themselves and something that, you know, whether it's true, a lot of practice, whether it's talking to a lot of people or just keep on. I think the main goal is just keep on doing it, whether it's a mistake, just, just do it and just move on. Because I think we are so self-conscious in whatever we do that we think that if it's not good enough, we don't want to put it, we don't want to broadcast. But the fact that we, the four of us are here, not really expecting much. And, you know, Andre is saying, you know, just to have fun is really good enough to you know create a, a, a an interesting debate and i'm really really enjoying it yeah you know the the, the point about the self-consciousness is is really really spot on so the people who jump out there and embrace a lot of this stuff um often have less to say than the people who are scared to embrace this stuff they've got a lot more depth and they're just they i mean they're they're, they're, they're very um, paranoid about putting themselves out there and we've just got to all help each other really tap into you know the, our purpose and because it's the purpose that matters um, and just because you're watching other people out there sprouting off talking sharing doing a million things um, that's great that's great that those people have that self-confidence to go out there then and do that but it doesn't mean that what you've got isn't even more valuable to put out there in the world. So, I, I mean, I just find there are people that don't need any help shouting and there's, but the majority of people are sitting back, not wanting to participate. One, because there's too much noise. Two, because they don't want to participate the way they're seeing other people participate. Um, and, but three, it's more self-confidence. Why would anyone care what I've got to say? Mm. If you want to build your future, you have to have a digital voice today. Mm. Uh, for your career, if you want to set up your own business, if you want to be an entrepreneur, You've got to get out there in the world and stand for something. And it can be anything. The executives I've worked with have been interested in stopping sexual slavery all the way through to blockchain or artificial intelligence, or they want to talk about leadership. They want to talk about compassion. They want to talk about spirituality. I mean, there's so many different topics, right? Um, work out what that topic is and just get out there and own it. You don't even have to create your own content to start with. 
share other people's content that you agree with, and that can be your starting point. But find the starting point, but more before that, find your confidence. Um, if people are interested in what you've got to say in, in, a, in the physical world, then you're gonna have an audience in the digital world. Mm. So take, take the chance. Mm. And it, mostly, it's fun out there. People are kind. I mean, of course, there's horrible people online, especially as a female blogger with an opinion on, on some pretty um, topical subjects these days. But, you know, we've just got to put ourselves out there and, and take a chance and take a risk. And the doors that I've watched it open for people, including myself, they're, they're amazing doors. Mm. But mm. integrity, um, act, always act with honour, have a service mindset, be a good person, be a good human being, mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, and amazing things will happen. But it's not a short-term success story. Mm. You've got to be in it for the long term. So I think, Andre, what you just said is very, very true. So, you know, when I first started, um, even just talking on videos or just writing stuff, you get people writing comments. And I find that people who write negative comments, it's a reflection of themselves. You know, when they, criticize, they are criticizing themselves. But yep. what's really important is that when you have no criticism or no comments, you become invisible. So I think it's even, even when you have negative comments, it's how you use those negative comments to create conversations with how you deal with it. So it's better to have, you know, I'm just, I'm just saying that um, whatever happens, deal with the comments in a very positive light because the negative comments turns positive when it's dealt with in a really smart or clever way. Or, or you can just be a smart ass because if you're dealing with a troll, yeah. they're, not, they're not interested in talking to you anyway. No. They, they just want to attack. So my advice with trolls, um, respond once, respond twice, if they're still just shouting at you and not listening. Yeah. I mean, it's so easy to be misinterpreted. I, I, I've had, especially um, mm. as, as a female, um, you can attract a lot more attention, um, just, you know, uh, ridiculous situations, absolutely ridiculous. Mm. Uh, and uh, you just get used to it. You kind of become a bit immune to it. Um, but from a professional perspective, the majority of people are nice. And this is also the other reason we should be supporting our community. So if you've got someone in your community that you really like, you really value them, you like what they've got to share, write a comment on their blogs, mm. share their blogs, show them you support them, all this sitting back. And then people will then go and launch their position on social media and they're like, nobody's talking to me. I'm like, well, mm. go and talk to other people first. Use mm. that as your launch pad. It, support your community, join the giving economy. You'll get more in return than you can even possibly imagine, but you get gratefulness and grat because People just need the confidence that they're doing the right thing so that they keep going. And it's by supporting them that they'll get the confidence to keep going. So we've got to be better at that for each other too. And actually, I think when it comes to video and confidence, I mean, Julian shared some fairly interesting information at the um, APSS convention, where remember you were talking about how you look in the, in the video and how you sound in the video. Um, do you want to share that again, Julian? I thought, because that really helped me out a lot. Yeah, yeah, sure. So when, you know, we all go, we all go, oh, I don't like how I look, don't like how I sound, got nothing to say. We all say that, we all say that. There's actually a lot of science behind that. Uh, so when, so just quickly, when you look at yourself uh, on video, you're not actually seeing uh, yourself how you normally see yourself because you look in the mirror. So the only way you normally see yourself is in the mirror. And that's yep. a mirror reflection. It's back to front. Mm -hmm. But that's what you're used to. And you go, oh, well, you know, I'm sort of used to that. When you watch video, you're flipped around the other way. Mm -hmm. And it's not familiar. And you go, well, that shouldn't matter because we've got symmetrical faces. No, no, we don't. No, we don't. <laughs> There's only about 0.0001% of the world's population who's got a purely symmetrical face. We've all got something a little bit off. And um, so I show that, you know, where, where, where you mirror the face. And you get two, dis you know, three distinctly heads. It's a very odd looking thing. So when you look at yourself on video, you're not seeing yourself how you've ever seen yourself before. And we don't like it. It's called the familiarity principle. When mm. we talk and we hear ourselves on video, we go, oh, God, it sounds so nasally. That's just horrible. Especially when you've got an Australian accent. <laughs> yeah. But, but when we talk normally, we, we, we hear ourselves two ways. We hear ourselves convectively so think about uh like a convection oven the heat goes through the air our sound goes through the air comes back into our ears and then we hear ourselves conductively that's where the sound comes out of our larynx goes up through the bones in our jaws through the bones in our ears and into our ears now if you're still watching out there everyone's <laughs> going to put their hands on their ears and just press gently 
and count to five. I'm going to do it now. One, two, three, four, five. And when you do that, you're going to hear a quite a lower, more bassy sound. So when you talk normally, you're hearing a mix of your convective sound and your conductive sound. But when you hear yourself on video, all of a sudden, the conductive sound is gone and it sounds really thin. And you go, that's not me. That's not what I sound like. Yes, it is. But everyone else in the world loves you. Mm. Oh, you I love you. Wow, mm. I love how you sound. That's fantastic. But for you hearing it back, it's different. Mm. So what you've got to understand is that everybody on the planet suffers the same thing. Mm. So you take those concerns, you put them in a little box, you lock the key, and you throw away the key and you move on to the next worry that you've got. But <laughs> one by one, so when I work when I work with people on video, is we unpack this mm. because I work on a process of heart, head, and hands. And you can't start video by pushing using your hands. You can, it's, it's pointless because you'll go out to make the video and you go, oh, I just don't feel like it because your belief, everything we've been talking about, this is wrong. And until this is wrong, until your head, until you can see the path that you're going to take in front of you, forget about pushing buttons. You get this and this right, then this becomes really easy because you go, oh, I actually want to make some more videos now, as Serene is finding out. From you, I was like, okay, so all I need to do is to see myself on video often enough to get used to this new look and hear myself often enough to get used to this new sound, which is basically what I did. So before the one that I posted up, I made a lot of um, kind of dark videos and I looked at myself and it took like probably a week of looking at myself and finally I was like, okay, you know, now it looks normal to me. And actually it's not as painful a process as I thought it would be. But actually that understanding was really actually what, what was very helpful. <laughs> Yeah. And it's not painful. I always say it's just a daily dose of mild discomfort. That's it. I mean, pain, you know, put, put it in perspective. Hard, it, to me, this is my ver hard is when I lose someone I love in my life. Mm. That's hard. That rips the soul out of me. And I use that as my benchmark. You know, um, just doing something about, you know, presentation and that. Yeah, we got to work our way through there. But that's just mild discomfort. Mm. Yeah. You know, yeah, it, it passes very quickly. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, think the, I, I think the other thing that, uh, that, that really matters in all of this, right? Because this is, it, this is a big part of the conversation, the getting started bit. And it's something I talk to people about all the time. Mm. If you are on a mission to, to achieve something, to, cha to change hearts and minds, to make the world smile, to make the world laugh, to make the world think in a different way. If you've got this deep mission inside of you and you recognise that you can use the tools available today to support that mission, you'll face the discomfort because your mission is more important than that. And so I, I make that the basis of what you do because then it doesn't matter if you feel weird and awkward on video, you're going to do it anyway because it's bigger than you. You're contributing your voice to something that you care about. Mm. And I don't think enough people come at it from that perspective, that real heart perspective. And I think the ones who do, that I watch, who do that, they, they, stand, they stand shoulders above everyone. And it doesn't matter how awkward their video is or how unprofessional it's produced or how bad their writing is. You know, there's a lot of people writing English as a second language, but they're giving it a go. None of that matters. If the intention behind what you're doing is powerful enough, you can pretty much overcome any, any of those they're almost cosmetic fears. I mean, I get them. I, I have them just like everybody else. But if I want to do one, if I want to change the world, then I've got to, I've got to put myself that self out there and be uncomfortable. And that's, that's, that's what this time's all about. I mean, it's what life's always been about, but most people aren't, they're not ready to, to, to embrace this discomfort, but we all have to because the world's changing so quickly. None of us have got a choice anymore. Mm. And this is just, a, you know, video is just part of an evolution of communication. Exactly. I mean, you know, it was, only, it was only 25 years ago, we were still banging, you know, away on, on typewriters yeah. or 30 years ago. Yeah. And, you know, and people say, oh, I'm not going to use a word processor. And of course, we all use word processors now. And just to mm -hmm. actually, this is a, a, a point I'd like to make. Uh, somebody said before that, um, you know, uh, we, not everyone should, I was a Andrea, not everyone should, you know, have to be on video. 
Um, a counterpoint to that is video job applications and it's coming in and everyone yeah. needs to learn to the ability to present at least in a rudimentary way mm -hmm. because you might be the best person for the job, but if you're asked to put in a video application, it can disadvantage you if you can't present yourself well. Because here's the thing, it's not going to be a human who's watching your video. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a, it's going to be an algorithm yeah. that is going through and it's going to sift. So, you know, uh, you know, somehow it used to happen in paper form. It's going to happen in video form. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this is just a reality that, that we're all facing. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, another reality we're all facing is 70% of the world will, will be living in the gig economy and won't have full-time jobs anymore, mm -hmm. right? So let's look at the future of work. What does that mean? You know, if you're, if you're, if you're a young person going, getting ready to go out there and enter the workforce, are you going to even have a job to go into? And if not, how can you build, build a business around yourself and your skills? And that's where a lot of the digital presence will matter in the future as well. You need people to need to know you and know who you are and know what you stand for so that you can actually get opportunities in the future. So really taking on board all the change that's coming up. You know, we're going to be walking through the world, interacting with technology in a much deeper way than we are right now. Um, jobs are going, you know, what does that mean? How's it going to impact me? I mean, I don't, I look around the world, how many countries do you think are really getting, in, getting remotely future ready for what's coming? And then you've got the environment in the mix, right? Um, so we're, we're heading into a very complex future. Mm. But one thing that we can do to get ready for that is to own a stake in the sand digitally. And I, I think people are crazy if they're going to miss this opportunity. Mm. I think we are getting a few um, questions about technology. So vertical videos uh, from Evelyn about the challenges of vertical video. And then from uh, Andrew, he's talking about um, VR, um, mm. AR, augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality. So is there anything that you want to comment on these uh, new technologies? Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll take the one on vertical video. So there's do vertical videos work everywhere? Can you briefly present the challenges? I think um, as I presented in the last... Um, APSS meeting. I mean, most of the social media has now got vertical video formats. And vertical videos isn't like 9 by 16. I mean, it could also take the form of 4 by 5 and also a square format. So it's not, I mean, I think we've been just discussing over the last one hour, one hour and a half. I mean, vertical as a format is, you know, um, relevant to the target market that you're trying to reach. So obviously for Instagram stories, if that's your, if that's your market, then the millenniums and you know, the younger people could be your, your, your reach. But again, the challenge um, you know, that I think we've been talking about is how do you create you know, um, relevant content to your target market? Then within the relevant context, then what, what do you, how do you tell the story within that format, which is what I've been you know, trying to preach to. But I think at the end of the day, I think whether it's um, you, know, you, you being authentic or whether you, how you present in front of the camera, um, there's no, there's no doubt that you know videos. Um, as we're, if not this, um, obviously this what we're talking about is really, really important, and that we, you know, one of the ways that I can see how it's challenging is that you need to just take on this platform or this um, format and start to practice them. Because um, do you know, do you know Shannon that um, she was one of the celebrity? Well, I mean, she did a video video of herself and she posted it on on Facebook. Uh, so she told me that she spent. Um, you know, about, don't know, about two or three days editing it to, to try and get to the format. And she really learned a lot throughout this whole process. So I think it's really important for, our, for all of us to, whether how uncomfortable you are to just take on the, take on and just start to practice. So whether it's an app on uh, an iPhone that you just need to learn, the more you learn, the better you are in doing it. And even if you get someone else to do it, if you do not know, you might be cheated. So it's important to know the basic at least to be able to deliver uh, what is needed because you can't even breathe that fuller. So what, whatever it is, it is something that um, if you don't learn now, you better start today. So a challenge is for vertical video is so if, if, if you, you know, everyone's looking at the screen and on the top, there's three of us up the top up there. Imagine two of us were side by side and you said, yeah. oh, someone sit down, let's have a sit down and, and have a chat. There's a challenge for vertical video. video. How are you going to do that on the, you know, the one screen? Now, um, you know, there, look, there are ways around that. You might have to have two feeds going mm -hmm. in. Uh, but yeah, uh, so, you know, vertical video, you know, it, Again, it just comes back, choose the technology for the moment uh, and 
the audience. Yeah. Uh, and uh, AR and VR. Uh, Andrew, I'm not big on that, but when you look at someone like Tony Robbins, uh, so now, we, you know, he does his three-day events all around the world. Well, the last one he did in Australia here last year, uh, he, he wasn't here. So he was a hologram on stage. He did nice. the whole thing from San Diego, um, stayed there, and everyone was thoroughly happy with the experience. They felt like Tony Robbins was there. He could see them. They, they, they could see uh, him. Uh, it's just an example of yeah, where this is going. I don't know if you realize uh, Tony Robbins at the moment is in a process where they're taking all his like 30 or 40 years of videos, of writing, of audio tapes, and they're putting them into a big database. And he's now sitting in a studio going through this process of reading particular scripts and doing it from particular angles. And they're building an avatar yeah. of Tony Robbins. Right. So what you can do is you can ask Tony any question. It'll cost you, right? but you can speak to Tony and ask him anything. And Tony will talk to you and solve your, your problems. Yeah. You know, I, I just find it fascinating where it's going. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And as the costs come down, right, it's going to become more and more yeah. accessible to more of us. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, they see the, the thing is they're saying with CEOs, uh, well, I mean, and, and, anyone really is that you uh, that they won't have to make their videos in the future. They will go through the same process uh, and essentially they will just uh, type in a script and their avatar will, will read it. Uh, it. An interesting Ted talk to look at is digital Doug. I'm pretty sure it's called digital Doug D O U G as in short for Douglas. Uh, and there's this guy who's at the forefront of this. This is a couple of years old, but he's wearing a suit on stage with these cameras and all the sensors and on the screen behind him is a digital version of him okay. speaking. Mm. Uh, and it's quite fascinating to see where this is at at the moment. Like he's still got a big cable sticking out the back of him. You know, we're, 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 we're not there yet, uh, yeah. but uh, let's check back in in 10 years time. I think we'll be pretty excited. I don't think it's going to be 10 years. You mean less. You'll be talk we'll, we'll be speaking through hologram. We won't be going through this um, Zoom thing. Zoom I know exists. <laughs> for sure. So um, we have a couple more minutes uh, before we round up. Um, I just want to check whether any of the uh, attendees have uh, any final questions. Uh, and if not, whether each of you would like to make some final comments uh, to round this up. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll jump in. I would say the one thing that, you know, we're talking before that uh, people are doing, I think they're doing wrong, um, is, that they're, is that they're not speaking the truth. Uh, and there's, there's a simple reason why I have made a decision, a conscious decision about five years ago that I'm only going to speak the truth uh, online from now on because it's so much more relaxing. Seriously, <laughs> is that I don't have to worry about what I've said. Uh, what is, is I just speak the truth as I know it at the moment. And there are going to be things which I'm, I say and I'm proved wrong. It doesn't matter. I've just spoken the truth. And I don't, I, I, I don't feel like, you know, I don't live thinking, oh, there's an email going to come through and somebody's caught me out. Um, and I just think this is important because we are moving into this digital age. We're moving into video more. Uh, and it's a good habit uh, to uh, adopt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can I go, Brian? Yeah. Um, it's a storytelling tool. I'm not sure if anyone of you... Say it again? Mm. Uh, and to ask about what about VR as a storytelling tool? Right. I mean, so, sorry, for me, I mean, any, any tool that's coming out, whether it's VR, would be a storytelling tool. So I'm not a VR expert, so I'm, I'm not going to lie and be authentic about this, that I, I do not know how to maybe use it. But if you look at the, you know, that movie that just finished, uh, Ready Player One, I think that was a really good movie about VR in terms of how stories are also being told through that particular movie. I think the last thing I wanted to share was that, you know, even through videos, I think creativity, I mean, how creative you are is um, what people are scared about. And I feel that, you know, everybody can be creative um, and not to be afraid of being creative because I think they feel like they're limited in terms of what they know. And there are certain, you know, I think being creative is also um, using what you have in life. I mean, obviously the way that, you know, that you have lots of great stories you want to tell, lots of great experience. And sometimes we don't dig 
or tap into a lot of things that we already know ourselves. So I think I would encourage people to, you know, look within yourselves, within your family, within your friends, to see if there's really creative stories that you can create in the content and maybe use those, um, you know, use it for the right format to reach the right target market. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm hearing you talk about creative and mm -hmm. it sounds as though you are using it more in terms of creating content than yes. what a lot of people think, which like innovative, you know, far out and that kind of thing. Yes. I, I think, okay, so um, I just want to touch on this thing. So I think creativity is a very big word. I mean, when you, when you think of creativity, it could be expensive, it could be high production. But if you look at movies, the most creative, uh, oh, sorry, the most popular movies are the ones that are, they start from a human story or human insight or human, you know, a human, um, a real human fact. So coming back from being authentic and being yourself, I think a lot of, you know, uh, a lot of indie films, which doesn't require a lot of budget, actually does really well because it's shot from a point of view of, um, you know, from a, um, you know, like based on a true story or something. But if you look at a lot of Hollywood blockbusters, I mean, they form, they test a lot of these um, films, right? And they always cater to what the audiences like. The problem is that when they cater to everyone, it caters to no one. So I think what Julian mentioned about when he, when he does a video to one person, I really love it because even though that person might or might not exist, it feels like it's just talking to that, you know, um, it's a very personal video. So I think, you know, have, I think having content that's personal, content that's very, you know, human, and that's when, when I talk, when, I, when we do the work that we do in advertising, that human insight is key in cracking into a story that people love to listen about. Thank you. And Andre? All right, so Andrew, I can't talk to you about VR. Um, it's just not, it's not my field. I think it's gonna come in. Um, I think it's gonna probably come in in a very powerful way and it's probably gonna be all consuming. But we can't, you know, when you, when you look at movies of the future, they're, all, they're always pretty, pretty bleak, right? Humanity doesn't have too much potential to not get lost in the technology of the future. But I think that human beings will always be attracted to the physical uh, interactions with other human beings. So I'm not fearful of the future that's often predicted. I do think we all need to be paying a lot more attention to what's coming up and getting prepared for it. There's a lot of industries where the people are sitting around that have lost their jobs and they're moaning and wanting their industry back. Well, it's not coming back and there's a lot of industries that are gonna go. So we all have a responsibility to pay attention to the future. And one way that we can do that is one, be an active participant digitally, but also um, read, research, go deep. Uh, we've gotten too shallow. You know, people want these quick little bits of information or these quick wins. There's no such thing. Um, we need to get deep again. We need to spend time with knowledge. If people are putting, if people really know what they're doing and what, what they've got some, something of value to share with the world, then they deserve the time to be invested in that versus the influencers who are, on holidays in Italy with the new frock on, right? Um, so we've kind of, kind of the world's gotten a bit mixed up and I think people are getting a bit despondent by that. Um, and you know, the business people that I work with, they just find a lot of the stuff that's going on on social media is, is complete rubbish and it's completely switching them off. Mm -hmm. And I, I'd love to see us turn it all around, get, get back in, make, social media is one of the most amazing opportunities for the, for the entire world. And um, we're all focused right now on the negative side of it, all the bad things that have been happening, the Facebook, you know, all the, the elections. Um, but we are in a time of revolution globally. Um, you know, we're, we're on track as we have always been historically towards, you know, war, um, all sorts of good stuff potentially coming up, right? So we've got to pay attention, pay attention to the big picture, read, invest, and be a participant. And being a participant is what's going to really help all of us individually secure whatever it is we want for our future. So, any final words from anyone else? No, it was, it was, uh, that was. I thought that was our final word. <laughs> I got to say, that was uh... the final word from the Queen. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So now, we used to say, "God save the Queen." Now the Queen is going to save us all. <laughs> no, God no. I'm going to try. <laughs> So thank you very much um, for the three of you. I mean, Andre, Julian, um, Guan. Um, and for those oh, of you who are um, you know, attending, I'm having another panel discussion in July. 
Um, um, if you know APSS, they will, it will be Joel Gustin, um, it will be Karen Leong, as well as Kenneth Kwan. And uh, we'll have another topic, we'll be talking about um, how can we as Asians uh, make a better impact on the world. Mm -hmm. So it will be the same thing, first, uh, first Thursday, 8.30 p.m. Um, so come join me if you want, the registration will be up uh, soon on this uh, speak.sg. And uh, for the today's one, we have recorded it down and uh, we'll be putting it up on the YouTube channel. So all of you will get the link. Uh, if you want to share it with your friends, by all means. Um, once you log off, this, um, there will be a short um, feedback form. Please do uh, fill it in. Let me know how we have done and if there's anything you want us to improve on. Yep. So thank you very much to the three of you. I've really enjoyed today. Thank you so much for your support. And uh, thank you very much for everyone who's turned up. Thank you. Thank you, Serene. Appreciate it. Kudos to you. Yeah. Support yeah. Serene. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.